Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film Room 237, a documentary kind of analyzing and going into the various theories behind the Stanley Kubrick film The Shining. Probably one of the most intriguing films about a certain film I've ever seen. I guess about filmmaking too, but I think it's more about the analysis of film. You could say it's kind of a film analysis documentary. You could almost say it's a documentary kind of about film criticism and film theory. It's going into various writers and various people who have come up with lengthy theories about The Shining. One is a little crazy. Most of them aren't. I've watched a bunch of films several times while I'm making reviews for this channel, like The Thing and Public Enemy recently, and you do start to kind of notice like secret meanings and certain things, hidden subtexts, and Kubrick was always that master filmmaker who you knew put all of that in there and put all these kind of complicated meanings and subliminal messages, and that was kind of always the aura of Kubrick, that everything was exactly planned out. Nothing just happened, it was all very particular. He was always known for doing a hundred takes. When he was making these giant films, you can see that he had such control over them, and so you can really analyze them to be honest honest, I haven't watched a Kubrick film in a while. I used to watch them quite a lot, like once a month I feel like I watched one. It's been like at least a year since I've seen a Kubrick film. And The Shining's probably the one I've seen the most, and it's the one that is probably the most mysterious and intriguing. When it originally came out, it wasn't liked very much at all. Um, it, he was actually nominated for a Razzie for Worst Director. A lot of people hated it, and anytime I'd ask anyone older about The Shining when I was a kid, they'd be like, oh, that was like his worst movie. I didn't get the, why do you make that horror crap? The first time I watched it, I go, I actually think it's quite good. And the more times I'd watch it, the more invested in it. I would become. Now that I've seen this documentary, I have to see The Shining again. And In fact, I think I'm going to end up analyzing The Shining because of this movie. There's a lot of films about film and, you know, making a film and talking about a particular film and you go, I should check that out again now that I've seen this. But this is like, I have like such a drive to see not just The Shining once, but four to five times in a week. I mean, this like gets you so into it. They go into various theories about how this film is about the Holocaust and the number 42, 1942 was the beginning of the Holocaust, the hidden meanings in that, and the hidden meanings about Native Americans, and how this film is really about the slaughter of Native Americans, and how it's about a lot of things, it's about sexuality, it's about the Apollo 11 moon landing, I don't know how many of you have heard the theory before about Stanley Kubrick and the moon landing, about how there supposedly was a moon landing, but they couldn't actually film it and beam it back, so they actually had Stanley Kubrick film it on the set of 2001 A Space Odyssey and this film is kind of about him keeping the secret and his wife finding out and how you know Danny's wearing an Apollo 11 uh, sweater. Stanley Kubrick moon theory is a theory that I looked into before and more because of my curiosity that this theory exists. People have theorized that's how he got the lens for Barry Lyndon, the special lens that you can light scenes with only a candle and it can look amazing. And I've heard some of these theories before. I find them to be really interesting theories. If you really fall in love with the movie and you go back and you go through it and you really analyze it and you watch it a bunch of times, you start getting more theories from it. And I think some of that you could say is crazy. I don't think it's crazy. As I did with like when I did Public Enemy and I reviewed Public Enemy again recently, I noticed all these things I had never noticed before. I was picking apart things and looking at it and analyzing it in a different way than I had before. And I think that's the kind of the cool thing that this film examines. This film is really looking at when you like go through a film and you start to see other meanings, even though you may have seen it hundreds of times, and you just start deep analyzing. And this film at the end, and it's not spoiling anything really, is you get into the kind of the postmodern idea of film criticism where a lot of times I talk about this and it's artistic intent. What was the intent of the artist or the director? But it's also like sometimes the film has meanings to it that even if the director and the author didn't intend for those meanings to be there, they're there. And I think this film is a lot about postmodern criticism and postmodern criticism of The Shining and how you can read into all of this. I kind of actually think Stanley Kubrick was deep enough that a lot of these theories, maybe not the moon landing one, but a lot of these theories are probably in there. But in a way this inspires me to like go deep into a lot of Kubrick films and 
dig out all the meanings and dig out everything that's in there. It makes The Shining feel as dense as I always kind of thought it was, and it all it adds to the whole thing because The Shining is kind of like a ghost story. It's about this haunted hotel, and it feels like the theories are almost ghosts in themselves, and it adds a deeper appreciation to The Shining. The way older films can be perceived can change because someone can write a review of it, and suddenly it's a major film and it's in the top 10 or something. And Citizen Kane, for example, if you look at the original Sight and Sound list, wasn't there. And then the critics looked at it again and it became this number one film forever and ever. And when I look at Room 237, I think more people are going to be like, you know, The Shining is a great film. It is a dense film. It does belong up there with his great films. It should be in like an AFI list. It's really annoyed me over the years more and more that The Shining isn't as loved and lauded over as it probably should be because it's a really dense, interesting film. And Room 237 really gets into that. It really explores the film and explores kind of something that as a true film dork, uh, is something I like to get into is like when you really start analyzing the film and go, well, maybe it's about this, maybe it's about that, maybe it's also about this, but I don't think they intended it to be about that. And and I love that about watching films and rewatching films and falling in love with the film. Room 237 has that so alive in it. It's really an invigorating film to watch about filmmaking. You don't see any of the talking heads in it. You, you're just seeing footage. You're seeing footage from various Kubrick films like Eyes Wide Shut, the Killing, Dr. Stranger Love Lolita, of course, The Shining, Barry Lyndon, as well as footage from other films like Demon and Schindler's List, and they incorporate them, and it kind of makes it a really cool experience. They're always looking at footage, and they're kind of co-opting footage and showing you certain things about The Shining footage and highlighting things. One of the reasons why, when I was watching it, I wanted to see The Shining so much, because you're hit so much with the imagery of The Shining. You're like, I this movie is amazing. Like this, It makes The Shining look like the masterpiece it truly is. And I think that's that's one of the great things about Room 237, because if they made this in a typical documentary style, I don't think it would be as invigorating. And the fact that the analysis of it and the criticism of it and everything is there intact and that works well, but it also plays very well as a very entertaining and interesting film about a great masterpiece of filmmaking, The Shining. If you're, you're a fan of Kubrick at all, I think Room 237 is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen about Kubrick. So if you have seen Room 237 and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.